Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with homemade cream cheese. That's right, what if I told you there was a way to make your own cream cheese that was not only more expensive, but took days to do? I know you think that's too good to be true. Well, that is exactly what I'm gonna show you. We're gonna use plain old yogurt, a little bit of salt and a lot of thyme, and we're gonna make an incredibly delicious and creamy homemade cheese. All right, so to get started, we're gonna need some yogurt, and I actually found some sheep's milk yogurt at the farmer's market, which was kind of exciting. Yes, these are the things that excite me. But I have done this with regular cow's milk yogurt and it works beautifully. So the first step of this process is to drain the yogurt. And to do that, we're going to use some cheesecloth. So I'm going to line a colander with like three layers. Although I believe every layer is actually two layers of cheesecloth. So what's that? Two times three, we got six layers total. And I only did that math for you because we're on YouTube. If this show was on PBS, I would not have mentioned that. Oh, and by the way, make sure you put a bowl under your colander. There will be drips. And after we line our colander, we're going to go ahead and dump our yogurt in. And you're probably thinking, that's just going to run right through. Well, you know what? It's not. That's what I thought the first time I tried this. But that cheesecloth is going to hold everything in perfectly, which is kind of a big deal. Because what we're going to do next is gather this all together, tie it up, and then we're going to hang it to let all the excess moisture drip out. All right, so very carefully gather it up and then simply take a piece of string or butcher's twine and tie that top up. And you'll see as soon as you do that and lift this up, it's already starting to drip. Check it out. So we're going to hang this in the fridge and let this drip and drain for 24 hours. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. And the first thing you're going to want to do is tie this onto a wooden spoon or some kind of wooden dowel. And I got to tell you, I'm having some wicked Halloween flashbacks right now. Did anyone else's parents dress them up as hobos when they were young kids so they didn't have to buy them a costume? I couldn't have been the only one. But anyway, you're going to tie that on. And then we have to set that over something so it can drain. And a lot of people like to use a stock pot, which does work very well. The problem is it's kind of big and will take up most of your fridge. So one alternative method, if you have it, is just put it over a pitcher. That's going to take up a lot less room. The only issue you got to look out for is that you have enough room underneath to collect the liquid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to refrigerate that for 24 hours. And by the way, no, I don't clean out my fridge every time I do one of these videos. I use the extra fridge in my servants' quarters. Much more convenient. So we're going to pop that in the fridge for 24 hours, but we're not just going to forget about it. Every once in a while, you want to check your liquid level, and if need be, pour some off. What happened to mine is it drained and that sack got smaller. It sagged down lower, and it was actually sitting in the liquid. It's not going to drain if it's touching the liquid. So if you're using a similar setup, make sure you pour off the liquid occasionally. And by the way, you're supposed to save that liquid you pour off. We will refer to that as the whey, and apparently that's good for lots of stuff. Yes, whey. So I let mine drain in the fridge for 24 hours, pouring off the liquid occasionally. And after one full day of draining, 24 hours, I cut off the top and peeled back that cheesecloth. And look at that. That's pretty gorgeous. And it's not even done yet. So at that point, we're ready to move on to phase two, which is the salting and the pressing. So let's go ahead and transfer that into a mixing bowl where we're going to sprinkle over a teaspoon of salt or to taste. I'll probably talk about the salting on the blog post. We're going to take a spatula. We're going to make sure that salt's mixed in very well. And then you can use anything to mold this in, but I think a large ramekin probably is your best choice. Then we're going to line with cheesecloth. This time I'm doing two layers, which is really four layers. We've already covered that. We're going to spoon the mixture in. And I want you to do this step carefully and thoughtfully. You don't want any big air pockets in there, so really settle it in nicely. Yes, I do profoundly regret not doing the old tapa tapa to this. It could have used it, but no big deal. We're going to press it anyway. So once we transfer that in and smoothed it out, I like to put a little piece of plastic. I just cut a little circle from a plastic bag or just use plastic wrap. And I like to place that on the surface of the cheese before I fold over the cheesecloth. I think that just makes the unmolding a little easier. And you're not going to lose any cheese that gets trapped in the folds. And also because I want a flat bottom and I don't want that cheesecloth wadding up, I'm going to cut off the excess so I can press this evenly. And then we'll place over another piece of plastic and then cut out a round piece of cardboard that's just barely smaller than your ramekin. And that will help distribute the weight of whatever you use to weigh this down with. I'm going to use a very heavy marble spice mortar. Just something in a can would work great. Anything that's going to sit up on there and have a little bit of weight to it. And then we're going to put that in the refrigerator for two days to age it. And when I just said the word age, I totally did the air quotes. Because we're not truly aging the cheese. Not a lot's going to happen in two days. But what will happen, because of the salt we added and the pressure we're giving it, that texture is going to firm up. It's going to tighten up. And we're going to have something that looks, feels, and tastes exactly like a freshly made cream cheese. So this is two days later. We're going to go ahead and carefully unwrap it. And it should come out of the mold quite easily, but be careful. 
And once you lift it out, just go ahead and invert that on a plate and then very carefully peel it off the top. Don't go too quick. You don't want to wreck the design. Because as you can see right there, those cheesecloth marks are so sexy, so enticing, so provocative that people can't resist it. You know those marks you get on the back of your thighs when you've been sitting on fishnet stockings for a while? That's not what this reminds me of. But it is gorgeous nonetheless and visually says to your guest, that's right, I made my own cream cheese. Therefore, I'm better than you. Which is really the whole point here. If you're going to spend more money and take three days to make it, you want to end up with something pretty special. And this is. And while you'll find the texture almost identical to commercial cream cheese, the taste is definitely going to be more flavorful, definitely going to be a little tangier. And of course it works in every savory application cream cheese would work, but it's also amazing as a brunch or a breakfast or a dessert item. As you can see, I pressed this one in a smaller ramekin for an individual portion. Just drizzled with a little honey and topped with chopped pistachios. It really is fantastic. And you know, I just don't throw around the term fantastic loosely. So anyway, there you go. How to make your own cream cheese at home. This is not something you do because it's cheaper or because it's easier or because it's quicker. It's actually like the opposite of those things. You do this one because you have to. Because deep down inside, you know your life will not be complete if you haven't experienced the magic that is homemade cream cheese. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.